Hello and welcome to another Bushwhacker Review. Today we are going to be taking a look at Joey Logano's Pennzoil Ford Fusion for 2018. As always, let's take a quick look at the box right here. This is another one of the brand new 2018 Elites. So you got the generic Elite box again. Got the foil chrome Elite logo with the black honeycomb pattern and the generic box which I'm not a fan of. Made total of 100 of these things, 2018. Got a features of the body on the back. All that good stuff all around, but not too much to talk about with generic boxes. Here's the car itself. This is the paint scheme that Joey Logano raced at the Pennzoil 400 at Las Vegas. It's kind of coincide with Ryan Blaney's Pennzoil Menards car. I think those two will make an awesome set whenever that one comes out. This is basically the same paint scheme as last year, but they kind of slightly, you know, altered and updated and improved a few things on the paint scheme. Which I can pretty much already say that if you want this paint scheme but you're not sure which year to get, definitely get this year's, not last year's. This year's is superior on all counts as far as I'm concerned. It's also cool we finally got a Pennzoil Elite. Because, you know, Logano, I really wish Logano would have some more special paint schemes like this. Pennzoil used to get like two, three races every year. Now they're down to like barely even one race a year. Like, they haven't announced that this car is running anywhere other than the Las Vegas Pennzoil 400, which is kind of a shame. Because Logano has not gotten anything new this year. He's had the four regular paint schemes, this Pennzoil car from last year, then the three scallop cars. He hasn't had anything, like, really new or interesting this year yet, which is kind of disappointing. Probably have a new throwback or something, but I really would love something new, something fresh, just to spice things up a little bit, but whatever. On the hood, you have the big Pennzoil logo with the bell. Got Ford Fusion, number 22. Down the side, you got a big Pennzoil logo. That's one of the changes last year. It was smaller Pennzoil and had the little uh, shell, but this year they just got nice, thick Pennzoil text, which I really do like the size of. You got Auto Trader and Snap-On down there. You got Discount Tire and Triple A. You got AutoZone, but not SKF. Remember in the, some of my other videos, I was talking about how they the early year cars, for some reason, didn't have SKF on them, but it looks like they fixed and updated them all. I guess they forgot to update this one, because SKF was on the car. So, good work, Lionel. But anyways, on the B post, you have Ford Go Further, DXC Technologies, PPG, Mazak, Coca-Cola, and Bosch. Which, yes, Coca-Cola is on these cars. People have gotten to the point where because like they can't offer like primary Coca-Cola cars, they think like, oh, if the car has one Coke logo anywhere on it, it's not getting offered. Hello? They clearly can put Coca-Cola logos on cars. They just can't keep like primary full-on Coca-Cola cars going for whatever reason. But I'm pretty sure that Bubba Wallace Kroger Coca-Cola car can still be made because it only had a tiny Coca-Cola logo on the hood. But whatever. Got your regular contingencies and stuff there. Monster Energy and all that. On the back, you have Pennzoil 22 Crew and 22 Ford. I'm glad they fixed that, but if you don't know what I'm talking about, for some reason on the, like, 3D renders of this car, it had the stupid Roush thing where the logo was, like, all the way up to, like, the spoiler, it was going over the lips and everything, it looks stupid. Roush always loves to do that for some reason, but I was like, oh, come on, don't do that, Penske. But luckily, they did update that and go away from that and actually fit it into the little indent, which is nice. On the deck, you have Shell and Pennzoil. I'm sure the real car had Jiffy Lube there, so I'm not sure why they didn't put that there again, but whatever. This is number 46. You got the same stuff down the other side. You see this one also does have the little arrow decal. So I really don't know what they're doing with that. But anyways, let's take a look under the hood. Does want to open very far. You got Pennzoil and Powered by Ford. There's the Elite Engine detail if you want to see that. Take a look under the deck lid, which also does not want to open. <laughs> you got your typical fuel cell and such back there. Through flaps do, of course, open. And there's the underside of the car if you want to see that. Again, with the just stamped on instead of the actual like plate, which is kind of disappointing. Like I said, this is the kind of car that some people don't really care about. They're like, oh, it's the recycled, same paint scheme as last year, lazy. But I'm kind of glad they used the same paint scheme just for the fact that this is a kind of updated version. I never really was satisfied with last year's Pennzoil diecast. Something about the overall like spacing and sizing just looked off on that car, where this one looks pretty flawless. Everything is spaced right sized right i love the big Pennzoil logo on the quarter panel no shell wish it would have had jiffy loop i don't think did last year's have jiffy loop i don't think i think they skipped that last year too but like i said hopefully we get something new for logano this year like i was at least expecting maybe something in the coca-cola 600 but he didn't have anything in the coke 600 or the all-star race he said so far the only thing we can really look forward to for logano that's new this year is probably a throwback but i don't even know with that knowing shell they'll just copy paste an old throwback i don't know with the fact that Blaney's paint scheme, the Menards car, is the yellow submarine design, would you guys please run the yellow submarine on, like, use Blaney's design, put it on Logano's car with Pennzoil and all the, like, regular retro Pennzoil stuff and make a yellow submarine throwback already? 
That's the closest we've gotten so far, so please do that. I expected that to actually be what Ryan Blaney's pencil car was when that first got, like, talked about. I was expecting, literally, to, that would be the closest the Yellow Submarine ever going to get, because I thought it was just going to be the regular Menards car with pencil on it, where they end up using a brand new paint scheme, which was kind of cool, but I don't know. I at least, I, I expect, like, the regular, like, the scallop cars to stay the same, but I at least kind of like when the Pennzoil Special does change a little bit. Like, we had the silver car, the blue car. I would love for them to reuse that 2013 All-Star car. You know, the kind of retro-looking one. That was pretty awesome of a paint scheme. I even have a piece of sheet metal from that car. But This one is definitely better than the 2016 design. The 2016 design just really did not translate well. This one has at least a little bit more of a cool design to it, but... Have to see what 2019 brings. Hopefully they have a new paint scheme by then. Hopefully the Pennzoil 400 does continue. That was pretty awesome to see a Pennzoil 400 with Pennzoil colored walls, two Pennzoil cars in the race. That was just awesome as a Pennzoil fan. But if you want this card as a brand new release, pretty easy to get so far. I have a feeling this Elite, like any Logano's Elites this year, will probably get rare just because, you know, they don't, they're not making that many of them and Logano's usually get like Auto Trader and Pennzoil Elites. So I guess be wary of that. But anyways, I think that's pretty much all I to say. This has been a review of Joey Legato's Pennzoil Ford from 2018. Hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.